Anyway, three doves uh, remained, and at the consecration of the Mass in Lisbon, one of them flew to the top of the statue and held its wings out. And so there have been over the, over the century now uh, many such miracles of the doves, as they are called, by which they show a special attentiveness to Our Lady, perhaps hinting to mankind that we ought to give her the attention which, which God himself and the Son of God, her Son, has given her. Former Bishop of uh, Lady of Fatima, uh, now Cardinal Antonio Marto. The current bishop, who will be celebrating, be the main celebrant of the Mass, uh, Jose Ornelas Carvalho, Bishop of Lady of Fatima. And in fact, Christina, there are two emeriti bishops here, as well as the currently sitting ordinary of the Diocese of Lateria Fatima. I don't recall that ever having occurred um, mm -hmm. in the years that we've been doing this coverage, going back well over a decade now. seem to have lost some of our introduction at the beginning of the program. Uh, I'm your host, uh, Colin Donovan, Vice President for Theology, and I'm here with Christina Borges, our translator from the Portuguese, uh, who does all the heavy lifting on these commentaries. I was saying, Christina, in the part that we lost about the processions and how very early this began, uh, as well mm -hmm. as the occasional miracles of the doves, which would land at her feet, and uh, perhaps as an intimation of nature giving attention to uh, the woman of Genesis and the woman of the Gospel of John under the cross, uh, and reminding mankind that it ought to give to her that which God himself and the Divine Son who became man in her womb have given to her. And that's what the message of Fatima is all about, bringing devotion to the Immaculate Heart uh, deeply into the heart of the Church to be practiced by the faithful and by the Church herself.
element of these celebrations which is consistent is the participation of the Portuguese people themselves, many of whom walk from various uh, parts of Portugal as part of uh, penance offered to God on behalf of the world. And they come also in parish groups and diocesan groups. We see their many banners uh, throughout the crowd uh, with, with, of the different groups and uh, many international groups as well. Um, I know there are Americans there. I saw Brazilians listed on the uh, on the roster of the groups that are there, and uh, many other European and other countries represented. Acolhendo a missão de ser a mãe de Jesus, mãe do Filho de Deus, Maria é também, desde o primeiro momento, a primeira testemunha de seu filho. The announcer says Mary is the first witness of her son. Levando consigo a boa nova do rosto misericordioso de Deus, que nela fez maravilhas para a salvação de todos. Is the face of the mercy of God. Foi toda ela um santo e generoso a Deus. E aqui em Fátima, Mary says a generous yes to God. And in Fátima invites the shepherd children, and as well as we, the same attitude of trust. And joy in the love of God. Let us sing with a choir in Greek and Latin to the Mother of God.
happens every year from May through October, uh, May 12th to the 13th. Um, anticipation of the Mass on the 13th and the celebrations on the 13th. Uh, the pilgrims spend the night in vigil praying. There are several scheduled um, prayer events, if you want to call it that. And um, there in the little chapel of the apparitions from which the statue of Our Lady is being carried. Therefore, the reason why her statue is not at the main altar right now, but um, is at the little chapel and now is being carried for man. Concentremos agora a nossa atenção no altar do Let us concentrate our attention at the altar. Those who are seated should rise. Faz de nós as pedras vivas do templo do Senhor. The Holy Spirit makes of us living stones of the temple of God. In this day that we celebrate the mass of the solemnity of the dedication of the Basilica of Our Lady of Fatima, let us stand. Lining up in front of the altar area as the procession approaches the altar. We are the living stones of the temple of the Lord. Session comes to an end, mounting the steps of the Basilica and being placed in her place of honor. We are reminded that Our Lady leaves us uh, to the greatest event which her son accomplished, and that is his sacrifice on the cross. She always leads us to him. And here, the celebration of Fatima, although it's accompanied with great honors that are shown to the Blessed Virgin Mary ultimately culminates in the representation of the sacrifice on Calvary by which the church in every place and time as the prophet Malachi predicted gives honor to God by offering the pure oblation to the Father. Uh, this, the sacrifice of love for mankind and love for the Father which he gave on Calvary. 
through the ministry of the priests. Uh, this is represented uh, today here in the in Fatima for the distribution of the graces of the redemption to those who are present and to the world. And the faithful are then called to receive the Lord in that perfect communion which Christ himself predicted in the third chapter of John and then again in the sixth when he speaks of us consuming his body and blood. In other words, spiritually uniting to him in the most personal of ways in a perfect communion with the Son of God. And then we too in our Catholic churches preserve the Lord and save uh, the elements of the Mass to be worshipped and adored uh, for what they are, the body and blood of Christ himself. And to this way he remains with us until he comes again as he promised in the Gospel of Matthew in, in chapter 28 that he would be with the church with us until the end of time. And so he does. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Muy estimados peregrinos de habla hispana, el Señor esté con vosotros. Of the Spanish language, the Lord be with you. Cari peregrini de lingua italiana, el Señor sea con vos. The ship will repeat that same greeting in several languages. The Lord be with you. Liebe deutsche sprechende Pilger, der Herr sei mit euch. 
Chez les rangs de langue française, le Seigneur soit avec vous. Drage pijeme polse, pan z vami. Dragi hodočasnici hrvatskog jezika, gospodin s vama. Saúdo todos os peregrinos de língua portuguesa. O Senhor esteja convosco. Irmãos e irmãs, juntos de tantas partes sisters. do mundo, falando gathered here from so many parts of the world, speaking so many languages, coming from so many cultures. Here we reunited to celebrate the Holy Eucharist. We know that we need the help of our Lord to live in unity, in coherence with the gospel. Let us ask forgiveness from the Lord so that we may worthily uh, celebrate these mysteries. Let us confess our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. the only Greek language prayer in the Latin right? Lord has mercy, Christ has mercy, Lord has mercy.
Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Senhor, que nos fazeis reviver em cada ano. O oh God, who year by year renew for us the day when this our holy temple was consecrated, hear the prayers of your people and grant that in this place for you there may always be pure worship and for us fullness of redemption. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Leitura do primeiro livro dos reis. Naqueles dias, o rei Salomão de pé, Salomão stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the assembly of Israel. Estendeu as mãos para o céu e toward heaven and said, Senhor, Deus de Lord, God of Israel, não há nenhum Deus como vós. There is no God like you. Nem lá no alto dos In heaven above or on earth and in the Vós sois fiel à covenant and showing mercy to your servants. Who walk before you with all their heart. Quando eles andam na vossa presença de todo o coração. Mas será possível que Deus habite com os homens? Will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you, how much less this house which I have built. Yet have regard to the, have regard to the prayer of your servant 
and to his supplication. Lord my God, listening to the cry and to the prayer which your servant prays before you this day, that your eyes may be open night and day toward this house, the place of which you have said, my name shall be there, that you may listen to the prayer which you, your servant offers toward this place. And hear the supplication of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray towards this place. Yes, hear in heaven your dwelling place, and when you hear, forgive. Escutai da vossa morada no céu. Escutai e concedei o perdão. Palavra do Senhor. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, Psalm 83. How beautiful is thy dwelling place, O God of the universe. How beautiful, O Lord. Find the home and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, ever singing your praise. Blessed are the men whose strength is you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. He bestows favor and honor. No good thing does the Lord withhold from those who walk uprightly.
A, a segunda leitura da primeira carta. A second reading from the first letter of Saint Peter. Will be read in Italian. Exhorta-nos a aproximar-nos do Senhor. Saint Peter exhorts us to approach ourselves to God. E convida-nos a nós mesmos. Who are the precious He who is the precious cornerstone. Espiritual do Senhor. And let us participate in the construction of the spiritual temple of the Lord. First letter, St. Peter the Apostle. My dear ones, come to him, to that living stone, rejected by men, but in God's sight, chosen and precious. And like living stones, be yourselves built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Mediante Gesù Cristo. Si legge infatti nella scrittura. Where it stands in scripture, behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious. And he who believes in him will not be put to shame. To you, therefore, who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, The very stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone that will make men stumble, a rock that will make them fall. For they stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, that you may declare the wonderful deeds of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. The word of God. Thanks be to God. O Evangelho vai ser proclamado em português, espanhol e The Gospel will be proclaimed in Portuguese, Spanish, English and Polish. Let us stand and acclaim. I will sing Alleluia, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lexio Sancti Evangelii, secundo Matteo. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew.
Naquele tempo, Jesus foi para os lados de And when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do men say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Jesus perguntou, he said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus respondeu-lhe, and Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Tudo que ligares na terra será ligado nos céus, e tudo que desligares na terra será desligado nos céus. Now short summaries of this gospel will be read in uh, many of the European languages. Preguntó a sus discípulos, ¿Quién dice la gente que es el Hijo del Hombre? Simón Pedro tomó la palabra y dijo, Tú eres el Mesías, el Hijo del Dios vivo. Jesús le respondió, Bienaventurado tú, Simón, hijo de Jonás, porque eso no te lo ha revelado ni la carne ni la sangre sino mi Padre que está en los cielos. Ahora yo te digo, tú eres Pedro, y sobre esta piedra edificaré mi iglesia, y el poder del infierno no la derrotará. Jesus asked his disciples, Who do the people say that the Son of Man is? Simon Peter said, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed it, this to you, but not my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. W owym czasie Jezus zapytał ich, a wy za kogo mnie uważacie? Odpowiedział Szymon Piotr, ty jesteś Mesjasz, Syn Boga Żywego. Na to Jezus mu rzekł, błogosławiony jesteś Szymonie, Synu Jony, albowiem nie objawiły ci tego ciało i krew, lecz Ojciec mój, który jest w niebie. Otóż ja Tobie powiadam, Ty jesteś Piotr, 
czyli skała. I na tej skale zbuduję Kościół mój, a bramy piekielne go nie przemogą. Verbum Domini. The word is the word. Praise the word Jesus Christ. O Evangeliário, sinal de Jesus Cristo, palavra de Deus encarnada, é conduzida. Gospel, the Gospel, the word, book of the Gospel is taken to the celebrant of Mass, and then blesses the people with it. Podeis acomodar-vos para escutar a homilia. The announcer invites people to sit so they may listen to the homily. Irmãos e irmãs, My brothers and sisters, today we celebrate here in the Covid area the solemnity of the consecration of the Basilica of Our Lady of the Rosary, which is here behind the altar, and that represents an image of Fatima in the world. In its architecture, the Basilica opens itself as if opening, as if opening its arms to welcome all pilgrims, conducting them through the place of revelation of Mary to the little shepherd, to the altar of the Holy Eucharist, and to the house of God that is present not only here in this church, but in all churches, our parishes, our cities. The readings that we have just heard help us understand the meaning of what we are celebrating and the shrine to which we have come on pilgrimage. The first reading speaks to us of the prayer of King Solomon at the inauguration of the Temple of Jerusalem that he had built. The sanctuary shrines, he says, will serve to affirm that the Lord of the universe does not keep himself distant from his people, but wants to and comes to live among his people at the center of the city, where those who believe in his power and his goodness live. That is why the people come to the sanctuary or temple, which becomes a place of meeting and affirmation of their faith and identity as a people of God. It is a place where they come to ask for goodness of God and also to be reconciled with their brothers, sitting together, praying together. That is what makes our identity. That is what unites us. Reconstruímos a unidade. So we build, rebuild the unity and affirm peace for us and to take out into the world. That is where the importance and force lies of the shrine of the sanctuary. The affirmation that God is accessible and that he listens to the voice of his people and that he continues to guide his people as the shepherd guides his flock. However, Solomon is aware that the temple that he had ordered to be built is not the true house of God, because no human construction or building, he says, can contain or limit the universal greatness of God, his heart, which embraces the whole world. Indeed, when the people, historically, when the people was destroyed, God continued to speak to his people of Israel through the prophets. He accompanied them in exile in distant lands. 
that made the people of Israel a pilgrim people, but united in their faith. The faith of the living word of God. God who is present is the strength of his people, with or without a temple made of stone, no matter how sumptuous it may be. Jesus made himself a pilgrim with his people to the temple of Jerusalem, which he called the house of my father, which had the mission of being a house of prayer for all peoples. But he also announced the destruction of the Temple of Jerusalem and affirmed that he himself was the true, the new temple, Emmanuel, God with us, which is not affixed to any place on earth, not limited by any ideology, national ideology, but who goes to the encounter of all in each people, especially those who are that the social um, peripheries of society who are excluded economically and existentially. That is what the second reading tells us in talking about Christ as the cornerstone of the new temple. It is he who builds and makes possible the dynamism of this temple among people. It is made up of, of all those who are, as living stones, build this new reality, which is the kingdom of God, and that with him lives Jesus, place themselves, begin upon this road, the roads of all the world, building a temple meant for all people, expressing the love of God in ways that become comprehensible in all languages and cultures. Independently of its greater or lesser beauty, as this shrine here, or the simplest little chapel in the middle of a forest or below a, temp or a tree, the temples of stone serve for nothing if they are not the expression of the powerful and loving presence of the Lord Jesus, also our churches. Our church should be where life abounds, where their reconciliation Wounds are healed and new ways of life are proposed. In this path, those who reside in it, who are closest to the temple, are very important. And also, the many who spontaneously and voluntarily collaborate, 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 sorry, to welcome all those who come here from all over the world. Those who are here voluntarily to welcome brothers and sisters who arrive here. The participation of all and the life and warmth in which all are welcomed. But also the pilgrims who arrive here and who are welcomed. They are part of this. They don't stay very long here in this shrine. They return to their homes and their lives. But it's not a simple return to home. Shrines must be a place of new departure for pilgrims so that they leave as witness and missionary of the life, strength, and hope that the shrine launches in their lives so that they can take that with them and share that with those who are in need, most needed. The shrine has uh, parking lots uh, around it and also we have uh, gas stations. Also, we have electric parking lots in our day that offer the opportunity to recharge. Of the, so the shrine is like an electric parking lot that offers the opportunity to recharge us in the love of God who comes to our encounter, which allows us to continue the journey of life 
until the definitive encounter with him in the true shrine of life that has no end. It is precisely this way of which we hear in the Gospel of today. Jesus takes his disciples from the territory of Israel, the Holy Land, to the periphery, to the frontiers, in contact with other peoples and other realities. Galilee was called the land of the Gentiles. That land is like our cities of today, where there are people from all nations, all cultures, and languages. This is the place where Jesus takes them so they may discover their identity. It is there along the way. These things are ways, they're courses of life. It is there on their way on the road, their mission to all the world, that Jesus, as the gospel says, makes himself known to Peter, who represents all disciples in his identity, when he says, you are Christ, the son of the living God. <coughs> this is what makes all the difference and marks the beginning of this new world. This is an image of the dynamic shrine, sanctuary, that uh, creates new courses of life that departs from Christ. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the one sent by God, is the stone upon which he builds his church. Upon this rock I will build my church, says Jesus. And Peter says, you are the Messiah, the one sent by God. He is the one. Peter is the one who says after the resurrection, my Lord and my God. And that saying that Mary said, go and be with him. The shrine... The shrine is at the service of this encounter with the Lord Jesus and the profession of the same faith that unites the disciples as pilgrims in the church and leads them to their mission out in the world, the peripheries of humanity. That is what is happening today. We are here on pilgrimage to this shrine called by Mary to encounter Christ. And with the brothers and sisters of all the world, we are the pilgrim church of God, as we sang in the beginning. With Christ being the cornerstone. In this shrine dedicated to Mary, mother of Jesus and mother of the church, this message is particularly important. She teaches us to be united, a united church in the same faith and to walk together as a synodal church to bring Christ to the world. That is what she did soon after accepting the call from God to be the mother of Jesus, her own mission. St. Luke tells us that she, she left in haste to the mountain to take Jesus to the world. That is what she did also here in Fatima, revealing herself to three small separate children, children without any riches and without any schooling, but with a great heart. And they he enlarged their heart. That is how she takes care of us. And that is how she strengthens our faith, as did the strength of Peter and makes us capable of being witnesses to the power and love of God who does not forget it. That is why we trust. She told the shepherd children, she didn't say that life would be easy, that they would suffer much. They were victims of a pandemic. And the church continued repeating the same words of Jesus. He also did not say it would, would be easy to be church, but he told us he would be with us until the end of time. That is what happens with us today. We come as pilgrims seeking the light 
of her tender and strong countenance, the tender and countenance, strong countenance of the Mother of Heaven, her disposition to welcome the Word of God, her closeness to the littlest ones and the most in need of her attention and help. May she mold our hearts, may she heal us of our weaknesses, and show us the way of the mission that we may bring the joyful announcement of the good news of Jesus through our attitudes, our words, and the expression of our hope. The shrine that was built here to celebrate the maternal presence of Mary, Mother of Jesus and Mother of the Church, of uh, the dedication of which we are celebrating today, it cannot just simply be a memorial of the past and of the story of the three little shepherd children. It will only have meaning if it is a place of a dynamic encounter of each pilgrim with Christ, of a joint, joint profession of faith in so many languages from around the world, and a, and a place of departure from which we go to bring the to become active witnesses of this upon our return to our homes and our activities. May this be the mission that we take with us from our pilgrimage to the Shrine of Fatima. Amen. Now the creed. Credo in unum Deum. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. and for our salvation who came down from heaven and by the power of the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, 
he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Irmãs e irmãos caríssimos, neste Dear brothers and sisters, on this day in which we celebrate the anniversary of the dedication of the Basiliki, Basilica of Our Lady the Rosary here in the Shrine of Fatima, let us turn our eyes to God and let us ask with confidence to Him who sustains the continued construction of his temple, the church, in Christ. Let us pray through the intercession of Mary, the mother of Holy Church. Mother of the church, pray for us in the choir. Papa Francisco, Sussor de Pedro, for Pope Francis, successor Peter, rock upon which Christ built his church, that the Holy Spirit may always enlighten him and give him strength in his mission of conducting and animating the living temple that we are in Christ. Let us pray through the intercession of Mary. Por las piedras vivas de esta iglesia, for the living stones of our church, its ordained ministers, and all the faithful that form it, that God may strengthen them in faith, enliven them in hope, and confirm them in charity, and that they may be a sign of His love in the world. Let us pray through the intercession of Mary.
per tutti gli uomini e le donne della terra. For all men and women upon earth, and those who have the mission to govern nations and people, that they may be builders of peace and harmony, and may find in the Church of Christ a life and a sign of the presence of God in the world. Let us pray for the intercession of Mary. For peace on earth, especially for the victims of the conflict in Ukraine, that the Lord may teach the world to love peace, to build it and defend it. Let us pray to the intersection of Mary. For the sick and all victims of the pandemic, with its physical, psychological, and spiritual consequences, that God may comfort all and may help them in the reconstruction of their life, and that they may find in the Church of Christ, especially in the Holy Eucharist, the nourishment that gives strength for the way. Let us pray through the intercession of Mary. For the workers, employees, employees and entrepreneurs, who are facing a new economic and a crisis worldwide. That God help them to find solutions and ways into the future together. And that they are an example and partner in the Church of Jesus Christ in caring for work and experiencing social justice for all. Let us pray through the intercession of Our Lady Mary. Gottes Mutter Maria beten. Oremos. Za dzieci i młodzież, które w tym czasie wracają do szkoły oraz za osoby starsze, które obawiają się infekcji w domach opieki lub własnych domach, aby Bóg wszystkich chronił i umacniał w nadziei oraz abyśmy podobnie jak w tych środowiskach, tak i w naszych kościołach mogli szybko wrócić do normalności w wyznawaniu naszej wiary. Módlmy się za wstawiennictwem Maryi. For the National Republican Guard that today is celebrating 110 years of service in security and public order in the district of Santare, that each of its military personnel be an example of dignity, social conduct, human relations, and solidarity with one's neighbor. Let us pray for the intercession of Mary. Through the intercession of Mary. For all pilgrims who are either physical or spiritual present in this shrine, crowned by the Basilica of Our Lady of the Rosary, whose 
anniversary of dedication we celebrate today. And these pilgrims who bring with them and represent all the joys and sorrows of so many thousands who are not present here, that they may feel themselves to be two living stones of the immense earth to which Christ invites all humanity of, of all times and places. Let us pray through the intercession of Mary. Deus Pai, Criador de tudo o que existe. God our Father, Creator of all that exists, who through your Son Jesus will to renew all things and form a holy people for yourself, a church open to all humanity. Hear the prayers of your faithful and help them respond faithfully to your invitation of love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Oremos, irmãos e irmãs, para que este meu e vosso sacrifício seja aceito a Deus. May the and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Recalling the day when you were pleased to fill your house with your glory and holiness, O Lord, we pray that you may make of us a sacrificial offering always acceptable to your eyes, through Christ our Lord. O Senhor esteja convosco. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in this visible house that you have let us build, and where you never cease to show favor to the family on pilgrimage to you in this place, you wonderfully manifest and accomplish the mystery of your communion with us. Here you build up for yourself the temple that we are, and cause your church spread throughout the world to grow ever more and more as the Lord's own body till she reaches the fullness of the, in the vision of peace, the heavenly city of Jerusalem. And so with the countless ranks of the blessed in the temple of your glory, we praise you, we bless you, and proclaim your greatness as we acclaim. In the words of the Seraphim in Isaiah chapter 6, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. It is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. prayer is the second. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
simili modo post quam cenatum est, in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Por Jesus Christ, our Through him and with him and in him, in the, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the service command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil.
Livrai-nos de todo o mal, Senhor. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and with your spirit. And the people are invited to greet each other in the peace of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Felizes os convidados para a ceia do Senhor. Happy those invited to the supper of the Lamb. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. As we begin the Holy Communion, reminded of the elements of the Holy Eucharist, which Pope John uh, Paul II, St. Pope John Paul II, noted in speaking of it as a sacrifice sacrament, the representation of the sacrifice of Calvary for the, the benefit of the world in every time and place, as a communion sacrament, a personal communion, 
uh, the most profound personal relationship with Jesus Christ that a human being can have on this earth uh, to be united with his him body blood soul and divinity and present sacrament sacrament that our Lord remains with us until the end of time uh, in the tabernacle in every Catholic Church and in Catholic theology the the giving of Holy Communion as it were is the the completion of the of the sacrificial act uh, our Lord in establishing uh, the Holy Eucharist on the night of its institution at the Last Supper first consecrated the bread and the wine speaking of them as this is my body this is my blood and then he said take and eat and he gave it to be taken and eat to nourish our souls at the deepest and most profound level of our human nature uh, with himself in this profound personal relationship completing that cycle of sacrifice uh, that he would complete that those days of Good Friday to Easter Sunday and so we celebrate that in the in the Holy Mass and and now the many priests who are present uh, bring the sacred species out to those in the square that they too might participate in this profound level at the uh, in the sacrifice of our Lord on Calvary Christina, there is something we talked about a little bit both last night and today, and I wanted to touch it, touch on it again. Um, there is so much in the message of Fatima. We spoke a little bit of the of the secrets of July, and of course the events of the miracle of the sun on in October, the October apparition, which today is the 105th anniversary. Mm -hmm. And in, in that July, there were three secrets, the first of which was the Our Lady opening her hands and light penetrating the earth and the children seeing this, the suffering of the, of the damned, uh, the souls uh, tormented by the demons, a frightening image for children, and let it's, yet it's a message of the gospel and a message which she wanted even these young youngsters to see and to know is a reality and not just a some myth out of the dark past but something true and a real threat to each of us if we don't walk, walk the path of God and then she explained that in the second part saying that she showed this to them that they might pray for sinners and do penance for sinners and this is the personal call that she made of them and which Our Lady makes of us as well. And then she talked about the threat which Russia was to the world in her errors, the practical atheism of communism. But that's not the only practical atheism in the world. There's, there's the other practical atheisms, the secularism. The, uh, today we have the many ideologies which completely ignore God and which simply look at life as something pragmatic to be lived according to one's own thinking and not according to one's nature and who one is as a creature. All of these are practical atheisms which have spread out of Russia and now take various forms in the countries of the, the entire world, really. And there is in that part this ecclesial call in which the Pope, the head of the church, the vicar of Christ, representing Christ in every place and time in every generation with each of the succession of the popes is called also to act and the bishops of the church as the apostolic college to act on behalf of the world the society of the church representing Christ to act for the salvation of the world as Christ acted on Calvary so there's always this personal and this ecclesial action that we are called for and the popes have in their own way at their own time uh, tried to accomplish their uh, elements john paul ii with respect to the soviet union pope francis 
with respect to the crises of Russia and the Ukraine in our day. Um, and so uh, there will be perhaps other occasions when ecclesial consecration becomes the means that Christ becomes a sign again in the world as his passion, death, and resurrection was, a sign which the nations can rally around. And I think the prayer of the bishop today in the homily expressed this idea so, so very well. Eu creio que sois Cristo, Filho de Deus, o Salvador do mundo. Indeed, that uh, July 13th apparition was uh, quite packed with uh, revelation, um, not only to the Church Universal, but each of us as individuals, that's when Our Lady um, taught the children the prayer to be said when they are offering sacrifices, meaning all the little discomforts or the very big trials in life, that we are to transform those um, in uh, through Jesus in grace for the conversion of sinners that she taught that prayer. When offering up your sacrifices, say, O oh, Jesus, it is for love of you, for the conversion of sinners, and in reparation for the sins committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. So precious, we have a prayer taught by Our Lady herself. herself. Um, for us to use throughout the day when we are met with all the, you know, discomfort, uh, things that go wrong in our life throughout the day. And it also was in July that she taught that prayer to be said after each mystery of the rosary. Oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. And of course, with a vision that you just described, Colin, this becomes all the more vehement for the children who saw the fires of hell uh, and uh, are pressed then to uh, sacrifice for, to keep souls from going there, which they very much took on, upon themselves to do in their so young, as young as they were. Yes, nonetheless, she showed it to them. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. I think, when we, we fear speaking the truth, um, yet she chose to speak the truth to, a, I think, a seven, eight, and 10 year old. Mm -hmm. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. That you, you really point to that personal dimension, and I think this is part of the mystery of the church, that the church as a whole is a sign in the world of Christ himself, and it really through history walks a path similar to, we might say also to Israel in the Old Testament, but certainly to Christ in his life, uh, and more directly Christ, uh, obviously, because it is the mystical Christ. But every individual uh, also contributes to that, and the sacrifices you talk about is the is the doctrine of the saints and mystics that to make a and of Saint Paul in the Scripture to make of the whole day a prayer and a sacrifice to God, as Jesus throughout his life made every moment uh, something that was done for love of the Father and love of mankind. And we don't have such profound ways of accomplishing that as he had, son of God that he was, with all the merit that accrued to all, everything he did, every little thing, eternal and of human and eternal act, uh, temporal and eternal, divine and human in every single instant. But we can make of our whole life an oblation, and that's what these little tiny things, as we might think, well, they're trivialities. And then we think of Nahum and the Syri Syrian who wouldn't wash in the waters of the Jordan because the rivers in Syria were as good. No, it's this, the trivial little things that God asks us to do, which we do with our whole hearts that uh, are so pleasing to him, a sacrifice of the heart and not of lambs and bullocks and, and so on, but real baptism of ourself, a baptism of water, certainly in the sacrament, but also of blood in all that we do every day uh, in communion with our Lord and Our Lady and the saints and angels and each other here on earth and the souls in purgatory as well.
And then there's that third part too, Christina, the one which is was held until the year 2000. Um, and that has the same elements, really. The angel with the sword, the sword named Justice, if you will. Uh, and of course, justice is what we deserve for our sins. Justice is what Christ forestalls. And with that angel and the sword is Our Lady interceding, who dims the the furor of the of justice, if you will, or the full weight of it, um, as our most powerful intercessor, as she showed at Canaan. So those two things to go to Our Lady. Uh, who in and with her son in union with him and subordinate to him uh, appeals to the father that justice might give way to mercy the same message of our Lord to Faustina back in the 1930s to appeal to the divine mercy against the justice which the world is owed Something we didn't mention last night, you mentioned, as you always seem to, that the 13th, mm -hmm. uh, the 12th, I guess it's the 12th or the 13th is uh, Our Lady of Aparecida. Right, the 12th. The 12th. Mm -hmm. Well, it's also yeah. Our Lady of Pilar. Right. Which is the very first apparition of Our Lady, except she was still alive on the earth, more of a bilocation in which she appeared to St. James to console him in the north of Spain you know, because he wasn't having much success with those Celtic Roman people that he was encountering in that part of the world, Galicia and the, the north of Spain. Mm -hmm. And she consoled him and sent him on his way. Um, and he continued his ministry, of course, to then to die in Jerusalem. But uh, that was the first apparition. So the 12th and the 13th, I think, are very special for Our Lady in history. They always keep coming up in her mysteries somehow. Indeed. And um, Our Lady of the Pillar, and I, I should have said Our Lady of Padecida is the patroness of Brazil. Um, Our Lady of the Pillar is considered patroness of Spain and of the Americas. That's right. And um, As is our Guadalupe, the, so many patrons in the Americans, actually. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, and, um, you know, Divine Providence chose the Spanish, the people of the Iberian Peninsula, the Spaniards and the Portuguese, to bring the faith of Christ mm -hmm. to the Americas. Um, and it's so beautiful to read the original, uh, you know, texts about this but by the very, by, by, you know, Columbus's people and the people who, the, the scribe that came with a Portuguese fleet to Brazil on how, you know, the treasures that we find in this country are the souls here to be brought to Christ. So their focus on, on bringing Christ to the people of the Americas. And of course, Our Lady then appeared in Mexico in 1931 to confirm the, not only to, of course, be present there for her people, but also to confirm mm. the efforts of the Franciscan yeah. missionaries That's and right. to support them in that. And millions of conversions occurred as a result of her apparition yeah. in Guadalupe, in Mexico City. And we're only a few years from the 500th anniversary of that uh, apparition, actually, uh, in which we're reminded of, of her appearance there. and. Really, that as uh, Pope John Paul II noted, uh, that she, at that time there were no borders. Uh, there was, I think, one primitive diocese uh, which basically covered all of the Americas because there was no other diocese, as it were. And so Our Lady really was appearing in the Americas. Our Lady bringing Christ in her, in her womb is 
como the first witness of Christ, prontamente para partir apressadamente with Mary, who também nós somos uh, convidados got up quickly to depart to her to go visit her cousin Elizabeth. Let us do the same and bring Christ with us to those whom we meet along the way of our life. May the encounter with the resurrected Christ transform us and those to whom we come. And may this transforming meeting be a testimony to the whole world. The whole Eucharist is always a very special moment that allows us to encounter Jesus Christ. We receive Christ truly makes us a temple of his presence. Each time we receive him, we, are, we become truly, we can be sure that we become truly the temple of Christ and that we can be his instrument to others. Mary is full of grace and in her yes, her yes is a source of life. And in her, yes, she becomes the temple of Christ himself. In the desire that the Holy Communion is food for our souls. And in it, we encounter the Christ resurrected. Let us sing with Mary. sings the Magnificat, the prayer exclamation that Our Lady spontaneously uh, cried out when she came to visit her cousin Elizabeth. And St. John the Baptist and Elizabeth leapt for joy at the approach of his Lord in Our Lady's womb. There's an interesting example of mediation, how God uses human beings. He uses human natural things as we do in the mass. We use, uh, we use vestments, we use candles. All of these things are natural things that turn into signs and he can use anything. And in the visitation, he used a voice, the voice of Our Lady, as Elizabeth said, as soon as your voice, the child leapt in my womb. Let us pray. May the people consecrated to you, O Lord, we pray, receive the fruits and joy of your blessing, that the festive homage they have offered you today in the body may redound upon them as a spiritual gift through Christ our Lord. Na Eucaristia, Jesus Cristo admiravelmente próximo e íntimo de cada um de nós. admirably close and intimate to us, with his mysterious presence, but so real as he is in heaven with all the mystery of his love offered upon the cross. Through prayer, we recognize him, we recognize this gift and accept it and welcome it quietly in an attitude of praise and thanksgiving. This is a moment of a true encounter. Time and space, interior and exterior, come together so we can feel within our hearts that presence of Christ, Christ crucified and resurrected among us. It's an encounter, a heart-to-heart -heart encounter 
of each one of us with the risen Lord, who attracts us to him, to embrace us in his, us in his blessing. Let us claim singing. sung version of one of those little prayers taught to the children. I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love you, Lord, and I ask pardon for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not hope, and do not love you. That was taught to them by the angel, first apparition of the angel. The year, the summer before, spring or summer, the dating is unsure before the Marian apparitions, so in 1916. And he even held up a host and he had the chalice and he himself bowed down with the children to show that the angels, human beings, all creation worships God. Cara, irmã, irmão que te encontras doente e que vives esta peregrinação. Sister and brother who is ill, who has come here, com ela participando através dos meios digitais e da comunicação. In the shrine and also you who are not here but are participating through the means of communication. This word is especially for you. Let us let ourselves be inspired by the words of the visitation of Our Lady to her cousin Elizabeth. In those days, Our Lady rose and went quickly to the mountain, to a city of Judah. She entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And it so happened that when Elizabeth heard her greeting, the child left in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. The, the poor, the ill, those who are in need, they cannot wait. It is an imperative of conscience that we come to their help. Mary does not waste time. Quickly, she leaves to help her cousin, to help her cousin in her last few, um, months of pregnancy. She makes her life a precious gift, and her presence is the reason or a motive for great joy to Elizabeth and the child she brings in her womb. The text says that she was filled with the Holy Spirit. Therefore, it was not just a meeting of relatives, a courtesy visit. It was a moment of grace. São João Paulo II, na humilha, in his homily at the beatification of the little shepherd children, Francisco and Vicenta, he said, in her maternal solicitude, the Blessed Virgin came here to tell men to no longer offend Jesus the Lord, because he's already too much offended. The sorrow of a mother, that is easy to say that. Her, plead, her bleeding heart at the, at the suffering of her son, that is why she said, pray very much, pray much, and make sacrifice for the poor souls, the sinners, that they may 
que Maria corre. Come to heaven. We can say that, like miracle language, that Our Lady runs not just now from village to village in Judea, but from heaven to earth quickly to intercede for us, to intercede for you, to bring us to her son Jesus. He was the source of life and all consolation and hope. Our sufferings came are not without reason, without, without meeting. Your cross will be lighter if you know how to share it with those who are elsewhere in hospitals, in homes, and let us be inspired by the example of Mary to help us. Also the venerable servant of God, Lucia, e que a mandou chamar, dizendo que ela estava 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 And Jacinta herself said, yes, that she would suffer more. And Our Lady told her she would be taken to a hospital with my own, that she would suffer there for the conversion of sinners. And she told Lucia what was most caused her most pain was that she would be alone without Lucia. We need to accept the limitations And perhaps the greatest limitation and sorrow is that when the person is felt or feels that he or he is left alone. Real people are not a way, a way that we must be free ourselves from or that we must distance ourselves from. No, all life always has dignity. All life has dignity. We are children of God. And this dignity does not diminish when we are ill or are undergoing great suffering. Quite the contrary, it's when our life seems not to be of use to the eyes of the world that it becomes even more precious. Because there is no um, recognition. A quem a exemplo de Maria corre para cuidar de ti. Be thankful, my friend, to Our Lady, who comes to your aid, and repeat in your heart the words of the song, song, even if I cross the valley of darkness and tears, I will fear nothing because you are with me, Lord. these prayers and these comments are geared toward as we are now shifting attention to the people gathered to the left of the our left of the of the altar who are gathered there there are people who are sick with different infirmities and uh, our lord will come to them in the blessed sacrament to the person of the vision to bless them we think that this was a feature of of our Lord's own public ministry that he healed the sick. And sometimes on these occasions, whether it's here at Fatima or at Lourdes or at Loretto in Italy and other Marian shrines, uh, remarkable healings do take place as a 
again, Christ shows his presence through the mystery of the Holy Eucharist uh, to his people and as a sign to the world. And so the sick come here on these feast days. Uh, they receive the Eucharistic blessing. Um, and so this is for them at least a strengthening of their spirit and in some cases of their bodies as well. Repitamos juntos, Senhor, nós cremos em vós. Lord, we believe in you. Senhor, nós Lord, esperamos em vós. We hope in you. Senhor, nós vos Lord, amamos. We love you. Ó Jesus, vós Lord, sois o Filho de Deus vivo. You are the Son of the Living God. Vós sois o pão descido do céu. You are the bread come from heaven. Ó oh, Jesus, o vosso oh, Jesus. corpo é verdadeira comida. Your body is true food. Sing, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. in the highest. Na presença de Jesus na Eucaristia, a nossa oração em silêncio. Let us pray in silence.
Inclinemo-nos aos que puderem e joelhem para receber a bênção do Senhor. Let us bow now and for those who are able, let us kneel to receive the blessing of the blessed sacrament. benediction, the last couple of stanzas of St. Thomas Aquinas, this wonderful hymn in honor of the Blessed Sacrament. Down in adoration falling, low the sacred host we hail, low or ancient forms departing, newer rites of grace prevail, faith for all defects supplying, where the feeble senses fail. To the everlasting Father and the Son who reigns on high, With a spirit blessed proceeding forth from each eternally, be salvation, honor, blessing, might, and endless majesty. Oremus. Let us pray. Deus, qui nobis su sacramento mirabili passionis tuae memoriam reliquisti, Lord, in this grace sacrament, we come to the presence of Jesus Christ, our Son. May our worship of this sacrament of your body and blood help us to experience the salvation you want for us and the peace of the kingdom where you live with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Bendito seja Deus. Bendito seu santo nome. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Bendito nome de Jesus. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the great mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Caros peregrinos, quase a terminar a nossa celebração. We are almost 
finishing this celebration and our pilgrimage. I'm very happy to announce that this morning it, it was delivered to our offices the, the documents of the Pazistia, of the cause of Sister Lucia, the servant of God Lucia. It is an important landmark for the long way there is toward the canonization of uh, the servant of, God, servant of God Lucia. So it is a cause of great joy. I remind you that Sister Lucia considered herself the first pilgrim of the COVID idea. And during her whole life, she was a, a hidden pilgrim, but always present in her heart in this shrine on the 12th and 13th of each month. And we know that she always prayed and commended the intentions of all the pilgrims who would gather here. Let us therefore pray for the beatification and canonization of Sister Lucia, and let us entrust to her our intentions, our needs, with the same with the same confidence that pilgrims 100 years ago would um, bring their intentions to her for them to present them to Our Lady. That of course, Sister Lucia was the eldest of the three years. What he was referring to, of course, is the uh, the process by which a cause comes to the attention of Rome, beginning uh, with the documentary phase in the local diocese or in the local religious in the religious order uh, where the individual was a member, and. From there, uh, that having been completed, the documents are conveyed to Rome, where at the dicastery for the causes of the saints, uh, it will be evaluated and a recommendation made to the Holy Father uh, re with regard to the individual. So, important step uh, in that process here, the co committing of the documentation. The Bishop of Lady of Fatima will now bless uh, any religious objects you may have on you. Vamos agora os Let us now, we will now bless the religious objects. The religious objects. Faccio ora la benedizione degli oggetti religiosi che possiate avere con voi. Ora van a ser bendecidos los objetos religiosos que tengan con ustedes. Je vais maintenant bénir les objets religieux. Ich werde nun die religiösen Andenken sagen. Teras, Povocienia Devocionalia. Oremos. Bendito sejais, Senhor. Let us pray. Blessed are you. Source and of all blessings. Who always encourage um, the piety of your people through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary and the Saint Francisco and Shostinsky. Help your serve, help your servants, and grant that by taking these symbols of piety and faith, they may transform, be, gradually transform, be transformed into the image of your Son Jesus Christ. E agora, who live and raise with you in the Holy Spirit. Uh, a Deus, nosso and now in silence, let us make to God our consecration to God, uniting ourselves to the heart of Mary, that we may fulfill the word of God in our lives. Caras peregrinas e peregrinos, Dear pilgrims, as we arrive at the conclusion of our celebration today, let us together thank God for the gift of Mary, 
and this gift that he made of sending her to the little children of Fatima and the multitudes who came then and still come here to thank, to ask, to seek strength for their lives. I want to thank all of you, those who came as pilgrims in groups, and the bishops who are here present also brought their brothers and sisters here and the parishes who have come from all the world. I want to thank all those who are in the shrine, are the fathers, sisters, mothers, brothers who greet the pilgrims and make them feel at home in the house of Mary, the house of the Heavenly Father. I want to thank the Servites and all the volunteers who make this great meeting of the people of God possible from all the different parts of the church. I in particular want to thank those who take care of the sick, who come here to the shrine, those who take care of them along the way, those who take care of them as they, when they are here, because they are the concrete manifestation of the kindness and care of God to those who need it. And now, in the sanctuary, sanctuary this time, we who recognize and thank again the presence of God here through the maternity of his mother, mother of the church, we come to God and we come to her that she may accompany us through our ways, our Walking along blocks, bring us to our Hemos venido como como final destiny. De una iglesia sinodal, buscando la luz del rostro luminoso, maternal y fuerte de María. Nos iluminó su disponibilidad para acoger la palabra de Dios. Luminous face of Our Lady. Los pequeños y a los necesitados de atención y ayuda. Her closeness to the, to the little ones, to those who need her. Her mission is the mission of the church. May her may she mold our hearts, heal us from sickness, our, our illnesses, and make us instruments to bring the good news of Christ through our actions, through our words, and through our hope. Cari pellegrini di lingua italiana, siamo venuti come viandanti di una chiesa sinodale, cercando la luce del volto luminoso, ma as a synodal church, enveloped by luminous light of Mary. She has enlightened you. Ad accogliere la parola di Dio. La sua vicinanza piccoli e a coloro che hanno bisogno di disponibilità to accept the words of Il suo atteggiamento di madre che indica la via dell'unità e dell'azione della Chiesa. And her mission of showing the way to Christ. Guarire le nostre debolezze and may she heal our hearts, heal our souls, and show us how to act being announcers of the good news of Jesus. The same message in different languages. The same message sa proximité avec les petits et ceux qui ont besoin d'attention et d'aide. Son attitude de mère qui montre le chemin de l'unité et de la mission de l'Église. Qu'elle façonne nos cœurs, nous guérisse de nos faiblesses et nous montre sa manière de porter l'annonce joyeuse de la bonne nouvelle de Jésus à travers nos attitudes, nos paroles not esperanza. Dear English-speaking pilgrims, we have come as journeyers of a synodal church seeking the light of the, the luminous, maternal, and strong face of Mary. 
we were invited by a readiness to embrace the Word of God, a closeness to the little ones and those in need of attention and help, our attitude as a mother that points the way to the unity and mission of the Church. May she mold our hearts, heal us of our weaknesses, and show us a way of carrying the joyful proclamation of the good news of Jesus through our attitudes, our words, and our hope. Lieb Deutsch sprechende Pilger, wir sind als Reisende einer synodalen Kirche gekommen, die das Licht des leuchtenden, mütterlichen und starken Antlitzes Marian, Marians suchen. Ihre Bereitschaft, das Wort Gottes anzunehmen, ihre Nähe zu den Kleinen und Bedürftigen, ihre Haltung als Mütter, die den Weg zu Einheit und Sendung der Kirche weist, hat es und erleuchtet. Möge sie unsere Herzen formen, uns von unseren Schwächen eilen und uns ihren Weg zeigen, die freundliche Verkündigung des frohen Botschaft Jesu durch unsere Haltung, unsere Worte, unsere Hoffnung zu tragen. Drodzy Pielgrzymi z Polski, jesteśmy tu jako pielgrzymi Kościoła Synodalnego w poszukiwaniu światła, którym nas obdarza Matczyno oblicze Maryi. Ona oświeca nas tu swoją gotowością na przyjęcie Słowa Bożego oraz swą bliskością tym najmniejszym i najbardziej potrzebującym pomocy. Jej maczyne zachowanie wskazuje Kościołowi drogę do wypełnienia swej misji. Niech Maryja kształtuje nasze serca, uzdrawia nasze słabości i wskazuje nam sposoby radosnego głoszenia dobrej nowiny Jezusa Chrystusa przez nasze postępowanie, nasze słowo i naszą nadzieję. E agora podemos juntos confirmar now, confirm a nossa compromisso nesta peregrinação e o nosso compromisso nesta peregrinação. I was able to find on the Shrine's website precisely what was committed, uh, given over to the bishop, uh, right. as, as it was indicated, as it is indicated, that uh, Rome and the postulation presented the document with the heroic virtues. This document called the Positio uh, was handed over this morning to the prefect of the dicastery, the causes of the saints. So uh, this is the point at which heroic virtues, which is the evidence of sanctity of the gifts of the Holy Spirit in the person, uh, in which the, that will be committed to the, uh, to the uh, College of Cardinals and ultimately to the Holy Father, who can then decree the beatification. So we look forward to that, hopefully in the coming years.
So the procession at the end of Mass begins and the statue will also be carried back to her place of honor in the little chapel of the apparitions uh, as the celebration of the 105th anniversary of the apparition of 13 October 20, 1917 comes to an end. The handkerchiefs come out, which goes back to the final apparition of October 13th when, as Our Lady departed and the children said she, they saw her go off to the east and as if through a door uh, disappear, the door into heaven being the implication of that. And the people, as they understood this was taking place, began to wave and goodbye using their handkerchiefs and this tradition has continued ever since. I'm sure it warms Our Lady's heart every time. of the Adeus, the goodbye to Our Lady. I think this and the Treza de Mayo are my favorite Fatima hymns. Absolutely. final prayer as we need you, O Mother of God. May this cry of joy always live in my heart, this immortal cry. O Fatima, goodbye. Virgin Mother, goodbye. Adieu in goodbye means to God as in other Latin languages. 
Adieu, adieu, adieu. As I distance myself from you, O Virgin, cry a sorrow. choking up so I can't translate. <laughs> it's too beautiful. <laughs> it is, it is. You can all look it up. Fatima <laughs> Adeus will probably find it in any search engine. I distance myself from you, a virgin. Tears come to my eyes, but I am full of happiness. Happiness because of your blessing. I distance myself from you, a virgin, and tears come to my eyes. Adeus, goodbye, I repeat, I cry. Goodbye, O oh loving mother. the return of the statue of Our Lady of the Rosary of Fatima to the little chapel of the apparitions, we will conclude our coverage of the celebration of the 13th of October uh, from Fatima, Portugal. I'm Colin Donovan. I'm here with Christina Borges. And we thank you for being uh, with us this morning. And if you wish to see the replay uh, at uh, 4 p.m. Eastern time, here on EWTN Television. God bless.